for what's at stake for the markets and the Fed. I want to bring in Emily Rowland, co-chief investment strategist at John Hancock Investment Management. Good morning to you. Uh, what do you think the numbers are going to be, and how do you think the, the market's going to take it? It looks like the market's kind of excited this morning, so we, we got to hope for a decent number. Yeah, big morning today, and of course the consensus expectations for 0.2% month-over-month month increase on both core and headline. I think the development that's thrown a wrinkle into expectations here has been China stimulus, or at least announcements of China stimulus over the last several weeks, which have, has caused commodity prices to see a meaningful increase and has increased inflation expectations. So I think that there is some risk to the upside here uh, in terms of this inflation print, particularly on the headline side. So I don't, I don't think equities would love that if you saw um, hotter than expected inflation coming in. I think it's largely been priced in on the fixed income side. We've seen a meaningful backup here in bond yields, but we would be watching that. We'd also be watching the dollar. Um, higher inflation may cause a bid for U.S. dollars. And in that environment where we've typically seen the dollar increase, that's also caused a challenge uh, across risk assets. Right. What have you made of, of the, the run that we went on and then a bit of a pullback, that pullback, maybe people taking profits? What are you telling clients? What are clients telling you? Yeah, we've had an incredible run uh, in terms of risk taking uh, coming into the quarter here. So I think some some cooling is warranted. I, I keep hearing about, about sort of buy the dip or this correction. I mean, it's like a two and a half percent correction. So I don't know if we can actually apply that word to it, but we think it makes sense in this environment. We've seen this huge shift in sentiment from, you know, fear to greed and start sort of this merry-go-round of now it's soft landing or maybe no landing. You know, we still think that this is a challenging backdrop. We look at these mixed macro messages. It's almost like a stoplight that's going from green to red and back to green and red. And we almost see this macro picture as being yellow. Um, it's telling you to maybe take your foot off the gas a little bit and look both ways before crossing the street, but it's okay to proceed. The data is holding in okay. It is decelerating, but there's a few factors here that we need to contend with. We still have the lagged impact of higher rates likely to hit the economy here. Yes, the Fed is, is pausing likely here, but it's unusual for them not to be cutting with the yield curve inverted to this right. extent. We're seeing earnings growth negative on a year-over-year -year basis, liquidity challenges. I'm not quite sure this time is going to be different. So play it out. If we, if we speak at Christmas time this year, where are we going to be? <laughs> Flat? We're going to be down? I can't tell from uh, sort of your tone where, where, where this really lands. Yeah, it's a great question because it really does sort of depend on your timeline here. We look at us as right now being firmly planted in late cycle territory. So that would mean the leading economic indicators are negative, the yield curve is inverted, all your kind of classic recession signals. And this has been a long late cycle environment. Leading indicators have been negative for 11 months in a row. Um, we're looking at a yield curve inversion on the twos, tens that have, has lasted 12 months. Those can go up to 16, 18 months. We've seen that happen before. So you could see an economy that remains resilient for one or two more quarters, a market that remains resilient for one or two more quarters. Not a great time to be adding risk in portfolios, though. That's one of the reasons that we've been looking at higher quality parts of the market, areas with great balance sheets, lots of cash, good return on equity, and even more defensive options. For example, we're starting to see healthcare perking up here a little bit. That's a mm. high quality option that's actually trading at a discount to the market. Tough to find these days. 